Hey guys, this is Game of Cow playing the Pokemon Trading Card Game, and last time we made the deck and I got a couple of extra energy, I decided I'd change it around a bit because I wasn't really happy with Ratstar Ratskate and Diglett Dog Trio being so heavy. These ones mostly because they've got low HP and their evolution this time takes a lot of energy, Ratskate just doesn't do a lot of damage. So what I've done instead, taken a couple of those out, I took one more energy out as well. And I decided I would play Jugo no the Seal um, not even Seal Jugo, what am I talking about? Sea King and Godin. Gonna play those. Now the reason I took out an energy, apart from I've got energy search, is because every card in this deck doesn't take very many energy to run. Starmie takes three, but two if you use the double colorless. Uh, Diglett Dogtrio, Dogtrio takes three, that's about the most expensive one. Everything else takes two, so I don't think there's really too much of an issue with having 19 energy instead, and 19 is tending 19 or 18 even tends to be about what I play anyway, so yeah. I was looking at where I was gonna go, and I was thinking originally Lightning Club, but you know, with, before I put in Godin and Seeking, but uh, it doesn't really appeal. I would do the Fire Club, but I don't actually think I can do that second, because there are a couple of places that you can't do until you've got more medals. And so I think I am actually just going to go ahead and do the Rock Club, because I might as well. Now we've already talked to her, there's no news going on at the moment. Basically, when you talk to her, if the Ishihara dude wants to trade, you have to talk to her first. It's really random, but that's just what it does. A far away place, da da da. And then there's you saying, Matthew's really good. Oh yeah, well, we better go play him then. Yeah, 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 of course, whatever. Let's go ahead and play him. Now, I don't really have much of an advantage or a disadvantage against him. I guess I've got Ratata, which is a disadvantage, but basically this dude plays with, uh, well, rock types, really, and I have a solo Ratata start. Are you serious? This is not good, because he plays with fighting types, and... Yeah, at least I get to go first, so that's fine. I got Goldine now. Okay, I'm I'm good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and trade her away Dogtrio so I can get myself a Seeking. And then Goldine can come out. Uh, Ratata over here has got no retreat cost, so is Goldine actually, so it's there's a lot of shuffling around at the start of games possible here. Only Star You, Chansey, and um, which one is it? Uh, Sandrew. They're the only ones that actually have retreat costs. Everything else is just perfectly fine. The problem is, although, although these guys don't take a lot of energy to attack, they also don't really do huge amounts of damage either. So, yeah, the maximum I can do is about 30 or 40 without massive energy cost. Sandslash can do 60 if you flip 3 heads, but good luck with that. But anyway, this guy's deck is basically just full of really high HP Pokemon that refuse to die. So it's actually not a great plan to play it with this type of deck, but we have decided to do so anyway, so that is just what we're gonna do. He doesn't do a whole lot of damage back to you most of the time though, so yeah. He does play defenders and stuff though, he really likes to stay alive. And if he was intelligent, he would actually just stall me out here by using Harden. Um, I'll show that in a sec, but Onyx actually has a, uh, let me show here. Harden actually reduces damage to zero if the opponent does 30 or less damage in one go. So because my damage caps out at 30 if he was intelligent, he would actually just do that. Especially because he's put the second energy on in the first place, so... I don't know. It just seems weird that they don't do that. Maybe it's just me. But yeah, you can see four turns and he's not really done a whole lot, so that's fine. I am going to trade it away Sandslash, I think, because I have all water energy in my hand, I might as well just get myself another Goldeen and set that up. 
Also, I've kind of just noticed it now, but his eyes are very, very red. Are you a vampire, dude? Because, yeah, your red eyes are starting to scare me a little bit. Hey, here's a star you. That's kind of useful. But yeah, just look at them. They're, they're creepy. Seriously. Yeah, he might not do very much damage, but he will chip you away after a while, so don't let it just build up and, you know, get yourself screwed over. But at the same time, with all of the quick fire sort of evolutions I've got here, most of the time I'm not going to have to worry, to be completely honest. I might not have any sort of weakness advantage here, but I don't really need it, to be honest. I've just drawn star meat. That is awesome, and I approve of that. Because, you see, this is the whole point. Double colorless energy. That provides star meat with both of its required energy, you know, for star freeze. So, even though I have only two energy on it, I can still star freeze to death. Which is good. I am... Uh, is there a point in saving this? What else does he got? He doesn't have anything else. Maybe there is a point in saving it, but no. Because I have another Sea King on the bench, I can get away without actually doing much here. He really hasn't done a whole lot this game. This is pretty dismal. It's maybe another one I'm gonna have to show later, because seriously, he's just done nothing this game. Uh, water energy on that, and waterfall to finish everything off. He plays Rhyhorn, he plays, I think, Cubone, and I know he plays Snorlax. So, there's definitely more in his deck than what he showed. What pack does he give? Mystery. I don't have very much for Mystery. Maybe I will play him again. I got Kabutops. I guess Kabutops. Bad dad, bad dad. Cannot talk, ever. <laughs> Kabutops, I guess, is alright. It's just about the worst evolution of the game, to be completely honest. Its Absorb does the same amount of damage as Butterfree's Mega Drain, which is very weird, to be honest, but it's not that good at all. It has to evolve from Mysterious Fossil, it has the lowest HP of all Stage 2s in the game, one of the lowest HPs of every evolution in the game as well, but... That's not the point. Uh, yeah, because even Weeping Bell beats that, and that's sad. It also just only 30 damage for 2 fighting energy. I mean, Seeking does that better. And Absorb is just too expensive. So it's kind of pointless. This card is not at all pointless, however, but it needs a specific deck to work. Pokemon Sensor, as you can see, remove all damage counters on your side of the field, but also remove all energy from your side of the field that, from the Pokemon that have damage counters on them. Now this can be manipulated if you can move your damage counters or your energy around, so it's not completely terrible as much as it might sound it. It would actually be pretty good in my deck that I've built up just now, so I might put that in. Because that would be pretty good. Uh, we got ourselves a Mankey, I might switch out Dotro for Primate later on, just because that's kind of cool. And we also get Lapras. Hey, there's another card I could use. Lapras, Water Energy user, it's an 80 HP tank that pretty much does more damage as it goes along. You can only put up to 3 energy on it to do more damage, but yeah, 30 damage on the basic is not terrible. And then Confuse Ray can confuse the opposition if you get heads. That's pretty much it. We also got Rhydon, that's another one I could show. Which would be interesting, but maybe not yet. This, you can do a decent amount of damage, but it needs a lot of fighting energy. Uh, actually, its RAM is not terrible. 20 damage to itself, it's got 100 HP, so it can survive that. And then it forces the opponent to switch as well, which is not terrible. Persian, oh, that's tempting to use, actually. Only 20 damage to scratch and then 30 damage to pounce, but it does reduce damage it takes next turn. So it can kind of tank a little bit, and I might use that actually. Although it's fighting weak, so it seems kind of silly to do, but whatever. Let's just quickly switch the deck around slightly, because Rattata Raticate is obviously a bad idea against this dude. And we are going to go with... A thing, I don't know. I guess we could put Spiro Firo in, and then 
the Cypher. Cypher is a bit unfair though, because, yeah, fighting resistance stuff, but whatever, we're gonna put it in anyway. It only takes colorless energy, it does take three of them, but it does only take colorless, so whatever. Gonna quickly show this guy off again, I think, and that will be this video, pretty much. Because, to be honest, we didn't really see that much of him, he kind of just came and went. I want to, I want to at least try and show it a little bit more than I did there. And even though this is probably a terrible idea, I'm putting Diglett out first because it has no retreat cast. That is my reasoning, pretty much. So, yes, he does use Cubone, so that is one which he didn't use before, I guess. Sandshrew! Yay! Different stuff is coming up. He's only got Cubones. Okay. How do I want to do this? Do I want to just attack with Dude Face? What does it do again? Uh, benching Eva, right, okay, so I can get away with that. I'm going to put Goldeen down, I'm going to put the Fighting Energy on Diglett, and I'm going to dig for 10 damage. See, it has an attack for one Colos Energy that lets you reduce damage that it takes, and he's going to get right on. Yeah, but it reduces damage that it takes by 20 on the next turn. However, if you bench either Pokemon, it kind of negates that completely. So I can get away with retreating now, and yeah, actually I could kill him by doing that. If I put that there, retreat to Goldeen, and then Goldeen also has zero retreat cost, so go straight back out to Diglett. Now that its snivel has gone, I can mud slap 430 damage and KO. Pretty good, I guess. It's a kind of creative way of doing things, and you can't really get away with doing that in the modern game, because you're only allowed to switch once in the modern game. But oh well, I can switch more times than one, so yeah. Oh, I also have an actual switch, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, Professor Oak, I've got a trader. I don't have any Pokemon, though, and I don't want to Professor Oak away so many energy. I could go for Dogtrio though if I did Professor Oak. That's a tempting idea. But at the same time, I think I'll just leave it as is. So we'll retreat out. We will go to Godin as I did before and go out to Diglett. And uh, yeah, we'll just go with the Mud Slap. Just go with the 30 damage and that will be fine. Oh, hello Marowak. That was not something I wanted to see. Marowak is not that great, but it can do a lot of damage for a low amount of energy, as you can see. Two coins, 30 per heads. A single heads was enough to knock me out, so <laughs> that kind of sucks. I was hoping that wouldn't happen, to be completely honest. But, you know, that that's, that's just the way the game goes. Sometimes you've got to take hits and... Hmm, what to do? I think I'm gonna go with Sandshrew, because Sandshrew has Sand Attack, and Sand Attack is a right pain in the ass. You basically make it so that the opponent has to flip heads in order to actually attack in the first place, even if their attack is non-damaging. So that's pretty good. It's only 10 damage, but that 10 damage is worth it, man. Seriously worth it. So what's he going to do? He's going to flip a head, so he is going to get to attack, but he still now has to flip heads to do damage. And he has... Ouch. That's pretty sore. Uh, water energy, not really that useful at the moment, but it does only have 20 HP left. So I'm going to use my switch, I'm going to go to Starmie, and Starmie does 20 damage for an attack. So, yeah. Chansey! Okay, that is Trader Fodder. I could get Sand Slash with that, actually. Try and show that off. Uh, Geodude, by the way, has Stone Barrage for 2 energy. If you flip lots of heads, it's very good, but if you don't, well, sucks to be you. 10 damage per heads, and you flip until tails, I guess. Let's get Sand Slash, because Sand Slash is a cool dude, and I want to show him off, basically. <laughs> That's just it. 
Sand Slash does 20 damage for any 2 energy, and then for 2 fighting you flip 3 coins and do 20 per head. Pretty cheap attacker, decent stage 1, you know, that it's, it's standard fare really. Maybe I should have put plus powers in this deck because that might have been more useful. We'll, we'll change it around as it goes along. This might well be the deck I stick with until... God damn it. Until um, we finish this place. So yeah, another star you. I don't really need that much more on the bench. But you can see everything is ready to go with just one energy. That's the sort of benefit of this deck. Is that everything can attack for a single energy. So you're not going to be completely in the dark about anything, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and show Sand Slash off, because Sand Slash is cool. It's also done damage this time. Hooray! Full 60 damage! That's... that's... That's something. You don't normally see that, actually. And we get a star me, so... Yeah, this guy's pretty much done. I think I've shown it off as much as I really care to at this point. He hasn't shown Snorlax, but we'll see Snorlax later on, I think. Probably not from another trainer, but I think I'll probably end up drawing one in a pack at some point. So, yeah. 20 damage only. This is a disadvantage for Sand Slash, but at the same time, it's still capable of a lot of damage for very low energy, and it does have that useful lightning resistance, so it's it's good. It's a cheap attacker which you can easily place into a deck and do quite well with. And 40 damage finishes the game, and that is that. So Matthew, you have kind of just been defeated, and that is it, basically. I'm not going to bother showing him off again, because he's done his... done his thing. We get an Electrode. I actually got a couple of these from a pack set before, but it's okay. 20 damage tackle, 90 HP tank, so it's actually tanky. That's an Electrode being a tank, that's very weird. Chain Lightning doesn't do that much, but if the opponent plays all of the same type of Pokemon, it does hit their bench as well. But it can hit yours too, so it's kind of weird. I don't know, it's not that great a card. Farfetch'd kind of is if you can get it right, but it's uh, it's a weird card. You have the Horn Hazard from Nidoran Mail, 30 damage if you get heads, but it's only for a colorless instead. The cost is that you can only use it once, and then from there you've got to put free energy on it to do a constant 30. So not that good. Kabuto, also not that good. I probably won't be using this myself. It's tanky in a way because, yeah, it halves all damage it takes, but it only has 30 HP. And it can only do 10 damage as well, and it's an evolution card. It's not good at all. Uh, Shelda is also completely useless. I don't even know if I'm going to show Cloyster myself. I think somebody else does use it, uh, Joseph or someone in the water club, so I might just rely on him to show it because it's so terrible. Uh, yeah, Confusion or the better attacks to prevent all damage. The thing is that, yeah, both attacks rely on a coin toss. It's got a retreat cost, it's only got 30 HP. What is the point? It's just terrible. Anyway, what are we going to get in this one? We are going to get a Clefairy. That's actually pretty important for later, so that's good to get it just now. Clefairy, only 40 HP, that's pretty much its downfall. It, uh, and its other downfall is that it doesn't do damage by itself. But yeah, coin toss to put them to sleep, or if you can get free energy on it, you can use one of the opponent's attacks instead of your own. Which is good, because you don't have any damaging attacks of your own. It's very, very powerful in the right hands, basically. And that's, that's just it. The Vaporeon, this is the last of the Game Boy EVs. This is basically Cypher, but with um, colorless energy only. Focus energy doubles the damage that you do next turn, and it does a flat 30 for free. So it pretty much is the same as Cypher, except it takes a colorless energy instead of a grass. It also has 10 less HP and is an evolution. 
but you know. Water typing is good for it anyway. Uh, Jotini, we'll see that later. This card, I have an idea of how I'm going to use this, but again, it will be a different deck for later. You basically shuffle one of your Pokémon on the bench back into the deck. This can be good with the right Pokémon, and I think I have an idea of how to use it, but that's for later. Uh, anyway, that is basically it. So, this has been Gamma Cow playing this game known as the Pokemon Trading Card Game, and join me next time when I might well have a slightly different deck style and we'll continue in the Rock Club, which for some reason is all blue. Never quite understood that. Anyway, see you guys next time.